All right, so um, we are starting from the part of checking if given functions are inverse of each other. For you to check if two functions are inverse of each other, we have a simple formula that we are going to be using always. Suppose we have been given two functions, f of x and g of of x. If we've been given these two functions and you want to check if these same functions are inverse of each other, what are you supposed to do? What you are going to understand, we have a simple formula. The formula goes like this. If you say f of g of x, it must give you the same answer if you say g of f of x, which is going to be equal to what? x. If you are able to check it like that, meaning that you are going to summarize to say these two functions that are equal. Suppose you get the same answer after you write it in that same format. So what I mean, if you want to check, if you want, if you want to check, you say f g of x it has to be equal to g f of x. It has to give us what? X. In other ways, some people, they say f, then they put o in between. You say g, they put x somewhere there, say equal to, and they'll say g, o, say f, they put x, giving us what? Giving us x. So if you are able to get the same answers, once we say f of g, of x equal to g of f of x it must give you what x so first of all you start by proving this then you come to this if these two they give you the same answers definitely they have to give us the same answer which is what x that's how it's supposed to be and that's how it's supposed to be so what you're going to understand the most here I think we know how to combine functions using the composite functions. We learned about this from our secondary education. We learned about this from our secondary education. So, a good example. I'd like to put a simple example here. I'll say an example. So, an example goes like this. I will just say, show that. Show that. Show that f of x, which is going to be equal to, I'll say, 3 plus x over 2, and g of x, which is equal to 2x minus 3, are inverse of each other. Are inverse of each other. So it, uh, it is very simple. Okay, sorry, I was quite disturbed. Okay, so it is very simple for you to easily understand to say, um, to check or maybe if you say f of g of x has to give you the same answer if you say g of f of x. We know the meaning of composite function. Whenever we're trying to combine functions using of, what does it mean? The one which is going to be like this, in this format, if you write it like this, it simply means you're going to, to take the entire function for g of x, and then you put this function where there is x in that given what function. Same applies even here. You take the entire function for f of x, and then you're going to replace in g of x where there is what x in that same function. So I know that I have solutions here, I'll say solutions. So the, the first thing, you're going to have something like this now. We have f of x, which is equal to 3 plus x over 2. We also have g of x, which is equal to say 2x minus 3. So the meaning of saying f of g of x, they mean you take this function and replace where there is x in that given function. So here, I'll get this entire function, and then I'll put where there is x. That's the meaning of f of g of x and it has to give you the same answer if you say g of f of x what answer are you supposed to get as the common answer you get x so if you start with this one it gives you x you start with that i mean you you come to this one it gives you x meaning that these two functions the inverse of each other reason being f of g of x is equal to g of f of x which is going to be equal to what x all right 
So let me try to write from where else we're going to have. All right. So um, what 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 you are going to understand the most here? We have f of x, right? Which is equal to three plus x over two. So g of x we have been given as two x minus. I don't know if it's it has to be minus three, eh? Three. So if we want to start with f of x, sorry, f of g of x, you take this function and replace what there is x in that given what eh? function. We are going to have something like this three, say plus. If you take this, you replace there. We say open bracket. Very very important. You have to put it inside the brackets to this, uh, so that you avoid being disturbed of the negative, which might be part of this one. So I'll put everything inside the brackets. I'll say like this. You divide this by what? By two. So meaning that f of g of x, we're going to get it as what? You understand that if you remove the brackets, we're going to have three plus two x minus 3 over 2. So if you arrange this and that, they're going to disappear. Reason being, they will be subtracted. We're going to have f of g of x, which is going to be equal to, and we're going to have 2x over 2. This and that, they will be divided. We're going to have x. So this one qualifies to conform to what we call x as part of what the function. Then you come to g of x. If these two functions they give you the same answer, meaning that they are inverse of what? They are inverse of each other. So I will say equal to. Remember, we have f of x, which is this one. We have g of x, which is this one. So the one which is in front, it simply means you get the function of f of x, you put where there is x in this given what? Function. So we're going to have 2, that is for g of x. I'll say open bracket. We're going to have 3x, sorry, 3 plus x. Then I'll say over. Two, I close. So since there is minus 3 here, you are going to write it outside minus 3. But remember, we are multiplying this by what is inside. And here there is a denominator of 2, meaning that this and that will be cancelled. We are going to have g of x. This is going to be equal to, going to end up with 3 plus x minus 3. Again, this and that. Okay, so we are going to have g of f of x, which is going to be equal to what? x like this so since here for f of g of x we are getting x even this one for g of f of x we are getting x definitely this shows that f of g of x is going to be equal to g of f of x giving us what x as the common answer hence they are inverse of each other they are inverse of what? They are inverse of each other. As simple as that. This is how you prove to say two functions are inverse of each other. You start with f of g of x has to give you x. Then you come to g of f of x, it has to give you what? X as well. So suppose you've been given another type of equation which is going to, uh, to be made up of maybe two different things that are common. Because it is very, very possible that they can give you a function which is going to have two different things that are what? That are common. So if you've been given such a thing, what you should do, you understand that you just do as wise. Sometimes they can even give you to say, um, if f of x is given as maybe they give you this thing, they give you this. Then they even tell you to say, if f of x is got this one, then they tell you to say, f of g of x is equal to x find the value of this one they simply mean you need to do what you just find the inverse of this one and you are almost getting what the function which is for g of f so we i mean g of x sorry so we don't even want to waste much time because these things are straightforward no need of maybe troubling yourself let me try to focus on the part of our today's lesson we focus on the part of our today's lessons all right, so today our main focus we are going to look at what we call asymptotes. Asymptotes, this is what uh, we have to concentrate on today. 
So someone can even ask a question to say, what is that same asymptote? What is asymptote all about? What are we supposed to understand under asymptote? We are going to fully understand to say, in simple definition, an asymptote is just a line which makes or rather which attracts the graph, but the graph can't cross it. A line which attracts a graph, but a graph can't cross it. You fully understand whenever I try to give you a simple example. But we have three different types of asymptotes. We have three different types of asymptotes. What are those? The first one we call it as a vertical asymptote. The first one is called a vertical asymptote. Secondly, we also have another type of asymptote which is called horizontal asymptote. Then the last one, I'm going to use a different term here. So I want you to, to tell me what that term means. We have an oblique. So the meaning of oblique, let me just clarify it. If they say oblique asymptote, they mean a slant asymptote. We learned about this in menstruation, whereby you are saying plant height, what, what, the like. So these are the three types of asymptotes that we are going to focus on. These are the three types of asymptotes that we are going to focus on. If you focus on vertical asymptote, you are going to understand it fully to say, definitely we don't have a specific type of asymptote which is going to be named as vertical. It becomes part of these remaining asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes appears in both horizontal and the oblique. How, are you, how possible is it that you can find the so-called vertical asymptote? You can only find the so-called vertical asymptote if you have a denominator which is uh, in a form of maybe x plus something, x minus something. Or it can be a denominator which is going to be quadratic. If it is quadratic, you have to make sure that you factorize that same denominator. Then you are going to come up with two different factors. Like the way, what you, uh, like the way we used to do under inequalities. If you have two different linear factors as denominators, what you should do, you equate everything which is inside the brackets to find the values of x. And those same values of x are the ones that are going to be what? Your vertical asymptotes. In short, Vertical asymptotes always appears on the denominator, and you have to make sure that you you equate everything to what to zero. Now, so I'll start. Vertical asymptotes, asymptotes appears if. The highest the highest power of the denominator is greater than the power of the numerator. Now, what does it mean if you say the vertical asymptote appears if the highest power of the denominator is greater than the highest power of the numerator? What exactly does it mean if you put it like that? A good example I would like to give you is this. If I have this as my function, if I have f of x, which is equal to, then I write 2 over i say x plus 4 what you are going to understand here this is going to have a vertical asymptote why it's because on top we don't have the highest power of what 
of x. In short, we don't have x in this case. We can have x at this given point, x like this. But what is the power of x? For them to come up with 2 only, meaning that the power of x here was what? 0 like this. So here, since we have x, definitely it shows that the highest power of x is 1. So the highest power of x on the denominator, if it is greater than the highest power of the numerator, here, the vertical asymptote is going to be there. And how are you supposed to find the vertical asymptote? You equate this one to what? To 0. You say vertical asymptote, you're going to do like this. You say x plus 4, it has to be equal to what? 0. So you're going to understand that x is going to be equal to what? Negative 4. That is your vertical asymptote. So I just wanted to clarify on this same type of asymptote to say this is how you have to find the so-called the so, the so vertical asymptote. You always find the vertical asymptote by equating the denominator to, to zero. If you have two factors like x plus 4, x minus 2, you have to equate the same two factors to zero and you'll be able to get the so-called vertical asymptote. That is the first one. We come to horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote appears in two different scenarios. It can either have the same highest power of the numerator and denominator or it will have the same i mean it will have greater a uh, highest power of the, the denominator than what than the numerator so i'll say horizontal asymptote appears in two in two scenarios it appears in two scenarios the first one we are saying the first one is when the highest power the highest power of the numerator the numerator the highest power of the numerator and denominator and denominator are equal. Again, it also happens in such a way that if the highest power of the denominator is greater than the highest power of the numerator, in that case, you understand that that type of asymptote is going to be called the horizontal asymptote. And how do you find the same horizontal asymptote? You can only find the horizontal asymptote by dividing through by the what? The highest power. If the highest power of the numerator is equal to the highest power of the denominator, for you to clearly understand to say this is going to be my horizontal asymptote, you divide throughout by the highest power of whom? That same what? Function. Okay, so what does it mean if I say you divide throughout by the highest power? What does it mean if you say you divide throughout by the highest power? The meaning of you finding the horizontal asymptote, if you have f of x, which is equal, let's say maybe you have x plus 2, then you have 1 plus x. If you check this function, we have the highest power of x here is 1. The highest power of x there is what? Is one so for you to find the horizontal asymptote here? First of all, you need to understand what the uh, the vertical asymptote is because I'm saying the vertical asymptote always in horizontal asymptote in uh, in oblique asymptote you always equate the new the denominator to what to zero. So this this type of an expression is what we call the radical function because it involves two different what functions. This can be maybe k of x. This can be h of what x it has two different functions so if you want to find the horizontal asymptote for this one first of all you need to know what we call the vertical asymptote i said the vertical asymptote for this one you have to do what you say one plus x you're going to find that it has to give us zero and the vertical asymptote now is going to x has to be equal to negative one you are done with this part if you come to the issue of horizontal asymptote since the powers are the same even if you had a greater number on the denominator than what is on top here still you divide by the highest power still you divide by the highest power remember i'm saying horizontal asymptote happens in two different scenarios it can either have the same num the same powers both on the numerator and 
um, the denominator on part of x, or it will have the highest power on the denominator on part of x than what? Than the numerator. So if you understand it fully, you are going to understand it like this. To find the horizontal asymptote, you say horizontal asymptote. How can you find the so-called horizontal asymptote? You can only find the so-called horizontal asymptote by saying you divide throughout by what? By the highest power of either the numerator or since they are equal, then you divide by x throughout. What does it mean? I'll divide here by x, I'll divide there by x, divide here by x and also that side by what? By x. To clearly check to say this type of a function is what we call horizontal asymptote, you have to make sure that you check what is happening here. If the powers are the same, this is horizontal asymptote. So firstly, before you even find that, if you divide throughout now, the second step for you to find the so-called horizontal asymptote is to make sure that you, you now replace on the part of x by what? By this one, which is infinity. This later shows us that you are talking about infinity. Any number which has been divided by infinity, it has to give us zero. It needs to give us what? Zero. So I'll start. I want to find the vertical, I mean the horizontal asymptote for this same what? Radical function. What am I supposed to do? You do like this. You say x over x, I'll say plus 2 over x over 1 over x plus x over x. So this one is going to give us what? 1. You say over, sorry, say over like this, then you say plus. This one is going to give us what? 2 over what? Over x. Then you come on this one. On the denominator here, we are going to have 1 over what? x. I'll say plus. Here on this part, we are going to have what? 1. So if you reach at this given point now, after dividing throughout by the highest power, after doing this, what you are going to understand is this now. Where there is x in this given expression, you divide or you replace the x by what? By infinity, which is here. So if I am to put infinity that side, I will have 1 plus 2 over infinity over 1 infinity, I will say plus. So these numbers that are divided by infinity, they automatically give you what? 0. Even this one is going to give us 0. So 1 plus 0, it has to be 1. Meaning that horizontal asymptote in this case, it has to be equal to what? If you divide numerator and the denominator, what answer are you going to get? We are going to get 1. This becomes the horizontal asymptote. Alright, we proceed. We proceed, we proceed, we proceed. This is how you have to be finding the so-called horizontal asymptote. First of all, you divide throughout by the highest power. If the denominator is the one which is having the highest power, you are going to divide throughout by that same one power, which is x. Suppose you have x square, you have to divide throughout by what? By x square throughout, both on numerators and also denominators. You find that there will be a certain point whereby you are going to have 1. Why? Because if you divide x square and x, we are going to get what? 1. Meaning that the remaining numbers that are going to have a denominator, you have to put where there is x, you replace with what we call um, the so-called infinity. And you'll be able to find the exact answer, whereby if you divide an answer with infinity, we are going to get 0. Those that are not going to be divided by infinity, they have to be divided. And you'll be able to find the so-called horizontal asymptote. So in short, Vertical asymptote is the board with the letter X. Horizontal asymptote is the board with the letter Y. And you are going to find that if you are able to write, if you are able to write these, they are going to give you what we call um, both the horizontal and the vertical asymptote. I said for the horizontal, I mean for the vertical asymptote, you have to equate the denominator, equate it to what to zero, and you'll be able to find the so-called vertical asymptote horizontal asymptote you have to find it like this you divide throughout by the highest power and you'll be able to get the value at the end right so the last type of asymptote is what we call oblique or rather slant asymptote oblique asymptote asymptote this one it happens if the highest power of the numerator is greater than the highest power of the denominator what does it mean so i'll say oblique asymptote happens it happens it happens if the highest highest power of 
the, 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 uh, the numerator, sorry, numerator is greater than the highest power power of the denominator. How can you write this one? Let's hope now everyone is able to see. No one is complaining. No, me, I'm still having a challenge with blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, a good example that I would like to give on oblique asymptote, it can be something like this. If we have, let's say we have 5x to the power 2 minus, then we write 2 here. You divide this by x minus 2. What you are going to understand, if you check the highest power of x here, is less than the highest power of x on the part of the numerator. Meaning that this is going to be oblique asymptote. How do you find oblique? The meaning of oblique, you can have this. For you to come up with an oblique line, meaning that it can either cross like this. This is oblique because it is not straight, it is not in the horizontal side. It can't move like this or it can't go in the y-axis. So, this becomes the oblique asymptote. How do you draw this one? If you have the highest power of the numerator than what is down here, you have to make sure that you use what we call a long division. You divide this into that. How do you divide if you check here, we are moving from x square, I mean 5x square minus 2. If we have x square, the second one is going to have what? x. Reason being we are dropping from 2, we go to 1. So since we don't have any number which is having x in between, what are you supposed to do? You include in between 0, x minus 2. We are going to have something like this now. You say 5x square, I will say plus 0 x minus 2 meaning that i'm trying to maintain the numbers or rather the coefficients of x or powers of x keep on dropping nicely until i reach on this one this one can have two only because you can say x is going to be power of one this is how you have to be writing the so-called uh, oblique asymptote for you to find the oblique asymptote you divide this into that meaning that if you write what is on the part of the numerator in a proper way which is this one once you use the long division, what are you going to do? You are going to pick the quotient. We know the meaning of quotient. We learned about this from grade 6, if I'm not mistaken. The meaning of quotient simply means the number you are going to get after dividing. And where do you put that same number if you are using a long division? Suppose you are dividing like this. If you are, you are trying to divide maybe 52, uh, you divide this by 3. Using a long division, we know that this 3 is going to be somewhere here. We're going to have something like this. You say 50, 2 at this given point. If you take this into that, we are going to write a quotient on top. Then you multiply this by that, you're going to write that same number down here. You subtract then you, until you reach on the final point. All right, let me try to demonstrate how to find the so-called um, oblique asymptote using the same word, expressions. Okay, let's say, suppose you have this. If you have, uh, I may put it like you have x, the power 2, I'll say, minus, maybe I put 5 over x minus 1, like this. So if you want to write this one, you find the oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote, you have to maintain what is going to be on the part of quotient. That is going to be what your answer. So the proper way of writing this one, it has to be written like this. You say x square, I'll drop the powers by including 0x, I'll say minus 5, you divide this by x minus 1. Why am I including this one? It's because I want to make this one be in a form of a quadratic. So we are going to have the coefficient here, which is going to be 1. I mean, A here is going to be 1, B is 0, and C is going to be negative 5 if we follow this as our quadratic equation, this equation, like this. All right, so if you are, you are trying to divide this by that using a long division, this is going to be on the part of, we're going to have something like this. Meaning that the numerator has to be put inside the bracket like this like this so mostly you divide x by what is on the first part you don't divide with the entire thing no you take x by what is inside so if i'm trying to divide x into that you're going to understand that it will give you a t x at this given point 
So if we try to divide, I mean, you try to multiply now, you want to subtract so that you can come up with a proper thing. You have to multiply this by that. We are going to get what? X square. This and that one, we are going to get minus X. Then you say over. You try to subtract this. Subtraction has to go like this. This minus that one, we're going to get zero. So if you subtract zero x minus negative x, what answer are you going to get? We're going to get x. So this becomes the thing which we're going to divide again. You say this into that. What answer are you going to get? We're going to get one. You say plus what? We are adding as you are increasing or moving like this. Then if you say this multiplied by that, what answer are you going to get? We're going to get x. This multiplied by that, we're going to get negative 1. So since this is alone, you have to drop this one. I, th I think you still remember what you used to do with 5. Then you subtract again. And probably here we're going to have the last point whereby you need to do it. We are going to have a thing which is going to give us um, a remainder. So these are going to be cancelled once you subtract. Negative 5 minus negative 1, we're going to get negative 4. Forget about this, we're not even interested in this one. But my main aim is on this one. This is the one which is going to give me what we call the oblique asymptote. Meaning that y is going to be equal to what? x plus 1. This is going to be oblique asymptote. So since this is not the exact answer, what are you supposed to do? Remember, when drawing a function, or maybe when drawing a line, if you have a line which is cutting on 0 here, we say this line is equal to what? X. So suppose you have plus 1. How are you supposed to draw this one in a form of that? What you can do, you can either use the issue of... Um, Haluna? Sir, before you go further, how did you find the negative 4? Okay, if you try to subtract negative 5... Minus negative one. What else are you going to get? Okay. You are there? Are you there? Yes. All right. So, the thing is, how do you sketch this? This is a grade two. I think this is a proper way of. I mean, this is a grade 2 equation. You can even sketch this one, even without uh, looking at it. You are, you've closed your eyes like this. You can even sketch this one by saying, I can either draw a table. After drawing a table, you put values. You can even put 1 and 2, put x, say y. If you take 1 here, you place it there, we're going to have 2. If you take 2, you place it there, we're going to have 3. When sketching, you focus on this. 1, 2, 1, 2, maybe it will be somewhere here. You say 2,3, it will be somewhere here. Then you connect these points. You connect them by drawing a straight line, bah, like that. So the best way of drawing this one, you can draw this one by using what you call the intercepts. The issue of intercepts, we said, if you want to find the x-intercept, I mean, I mean y-intercept, x has to be equal to what? Zero. So if you replace zero here, we are going to understand that this is going to give us y is equal to 1. Meaning that the first point, if you say y intercept x is equal to 0, we are going to have 0, 1, which is going to be at this given point. That is the first point. You come to x intercept. If you want to find the x intercept, you, you look at y. Y has to be equal to what? 0, which is this line. Y is equal to 0. If you place 0 here, you take 1 to the other side, you're going to have negative. It will come at this given point. Meaning that when connecting this, you connect this point and that point by extending a line like this. And this is going to be what? Your oblique asymptote. But look at what you have been given. I said horizontal, I mean vertical asymptote applies to both horizontal and the oblique asymptote. Even on this one, we are going to find what we call the vertical asymptote. Reason being, we have the denominator here of which I can just equate this one to what? To zero and I'll be able to get the value of x which is going to be my vertical asymptote. Gloria, I think you want to ask. Yes, um, I'm just behind. I'm a bit of a position. On the long division here, that's why I'm behind the rest. I understand now. That's on the long division. Okay, so we have x minus 1. Then here, but you know why I wrote it like this to say x square plus 0x minus 5, right? So I'll write like the way I wrote it previously. I'll say plus 0 
x minus 5. We divide x by the first thing. You only pick x, not negative 1, no. You consider this one. So if you say x into x squared, it's more like you are saying like this. x squared divided by x. What answer are you going to get here? Gloria, what answer are you getting if you say x squared divided by x? x squared. Hmm? What answer are you getting? If you say x squared divided by x, what answer are you going to get? Ah, these are simple mathematics. So if you divide x squared, you divide it by x. Look at this. I think you learned about indices. You learned about indices. We know that this one is having a power of 1. This one is, yeah, it has to give us x. Reason being, if you consider this one, which is a numerator, you are saying x squared, then I will say divide by x x to the power 1. What do you do if you're having the same things but different powers? You subtract the powers. This is going to be 2 minus 1. Simple. That's why if you divide x into that, you're going to get x. That's what I wrote even here. I said x. If you have x here, you multiply this by what is on this part. This multiplied by that, we're going to get x square. This multiplied by negative 1, we're going to get negative x over. You try to subtract like this x square minus x square, we're going to get 0. This will be cancelled. Then 0x minus negative x is more like you're saying 0 minus negative 1. What answer are you getting? We're going to get 1. So in this case, we're trying to subtract my x, meaning that we're going to avoid x at this given point. Then if you find this one, you, you divide again, you say x into x. What answer are you going to get? We're getting 1. So as you're moving from here, going like this, you are adding. We are going to, to add D plus C, 1 at this given point. If you do that now, you multiply this one by what is here. 1 multiplied by x, we are going to get x. 1 multiplied by negative 1, we are going to get negative, sorry, we are going to get negative 1. So since this one is alone, but these two are balanced, you drop the number which is at the end, which is negative 5. Negative 5. Then you subtract again. This will be cancelled because x minus x are going to get what? Zero. Negative five minus negative one are going to get negative four. Are you clear now? Yes. Okay. So after doing that, the one which you get on top here as the quotient becomes the so-called oblique asymptote. But how do you draw the same number? You use what we call the linear way of writing these numbers. You can either draw a box or you can use what we call uh, the asymptotes. If I mean the the intercepts. If you use the issue of intercepts, you say y intercept x has to be equal to at zero. If you use this one, you're going to sketch it direct. You're going to sketch it direct. But you remember, you have to draw a line which is going to be extended from down part up to where those two lines are going to meet. And always asymptotes. must be drawn in dotted lines. So when you're drawing this line, you have to make sure that this is dotted and not a solid line. Always asymptotes has to be drawn in what? In dotted lines. So this is how you have to be differentiating between vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptotes including the so-called um, oblique asymptotes. For oblique asymptotes, you use long division to find the oblique asymptote. Remember, even the oblique asymptotes, they also have a vertical asymptote. Reason being, you have to equate the denominator to what? To zero, and you are going to get the answer. Suppose the denominator is like this, x squared minus 4. This one, to find the answer here, this is um, the difference of two squares. What does it mean? This can just be written like this x minus 2 and x plus 2. That's what it means if you say difference of two squares. Yeah. Even when, when they write it like this, x squared minus 1, it becomes the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares, meaning that one is going to have a negative in between, the other one is going to have what? A plus. Even this one can be written like this. You say x minus 1, then the other one is going to be x plus what? 1. If you try to expand this, you are going to get back to that. 
If I try to expand this, I'll, I'll get back to what? To that. Same applies if they write like this. Minus 9. We are going to have x minus 3 and also x plus 3. Why am I including these numbers? It's because I know that at the end, if I multiply this and that, I'll get negative what? Negative 9. There are also cases whereby they can give you something like this. They'll give you something like this. They say, can you sketch this? Then they say x square, they add plus 4. So if you have something like this, this can't be reduced. Reason being, you can't have difference of two squares whereby you're having a plus in between. Definitely, if you want to find the so-called vertical asymptote for this one, if you equate x square plus 4 is equal to 0, we are going to get a negative square root, of which I'll teach you how to find the same negative square root. Here at the university, we find the, neg uh, the square root of a negative number. Not from secondary, whereby if you have a negative number, you say, this is not found. It is mathematical error. Here, yeah, no. We have to find the, uh, the square root of a negative number. But under asymptotes, if you have something like this, definitely this won't have the vertical. This won't have the vertical as well as the horizontal asymptote. It won't have any of the two. Now, what are the steps or what are the things that you are supposed to take when drawing the so-called vertical asymptotes? One, I said, the vertical asymptote, I mean, when drawing the, the so-called asymptotes, we said asymptotes are, or an asymptote is just a line which attracts a graph, but it shouldn't allow a graph to cross over it. So, I would like to write some of the things that you have to be following when writing the so-called asymptotes. What are some of the things that you need to be considering here? One, You need to know the vertical asymptote. Two, know the horizontal asymptote. Three, you need to understand the remaining thing which is going to be what y, y intercept. Three, you need to understand the last thing which is going to be what x intercept. And then lastly, you have to understand what we call oblique asymptote. These things are very, very important. If that this one is a must you are going to have this one either on oblique or horizontal reason being they both require us to have a denominator they both require us to have what a denominator okay now the thing is how are you supposed to draw the graphs under asymptotes how are you supposed to draw the graphs under asymptotes Remember, vertical asymptote, suppose x minus 2 is my vertical asymptote, I say equate it to 0, you say x has to be equal to 2, meaning that the vertical asymptote must cross where there is what, where there is 2 by dotting or by writing it using dotted lines, you say 2 like this, this is going to be your vertical what, asymptote. If we have the oblique asymptote, suppose the oblique asymptote is like what I am from drawing to say y is equal to x plus 1. And then you decide to draw it where there is 1, you come on negative 1. Do like this. You have to draw this one also in a dotted what, line. That's a bit, I want to get a rule. Alright. Okay. So, this is going to be what, my oblique line or oblique asymptote. It has to be in a form of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if, if you draw it like this, what you are going to understand here is this. For you to draw a, an asymptote, we are going to draw the original graph based on these things. You have to draw the original graph based on these things. One, the things that identifies which one is going to be your original graph has to be these two. 
the y intercept and the x intercept these two are the ones that are going to help us identify which one is going to be our original graph which one is going to be our original what graph remember if we have something like this always asymptotes they have a reflected d graph if the original graph is lying in this one like this it will have a reflected graph on the opposite quadrant this can be the first quadrant a this is going to be second c and d so if the quadrant is lying or maybe the graph is lying in the d quadrant it will have a reflected graph where in the opposite not opposite to mean like this one no it will have the opposite a graph i mean it will have a reflected graph in the opposite what will be the opposite for this one it has to be in this given part and how are you supposed to identify this one you can only identify this one if you know the the, the y intercept as well as the x intercept let's try to solve one question but you need to focus on this one first of all you identify to say this type of asymptote is going to be a vertical asymptote this type of asymptote is going to be horizontal asymptote or but remember don't focus on this one because it happens on two so the simple way of understanding asymptotes you need to identify to say is it going to be horizontal or oblique if i able to do this then you find the vertical asymptote first of all after doing that you come to either if it is oblique you find it's oblique what asymptote if it is horizontal we know what to do you divide throughout by the highest power of uh, of x either on the part of the new, uh, new i mean if they are the same or if x is having the highest power of x okay let's try to solve one question so that we understand what i'm trying to mean here Okay, so I'll start. Where am I going to start from? So I'll start with the oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote, what it is, if they say for f of x, which is equal to x, square say minus 4x minus uh, that is 5 over x minus 3 quickly i just want someone to tell me the type of asymptote which is going to be for this one quickly anyone to tell me the answer what type of asymptote is going to be for this one what name is going to be given to this type of asymptote whereby it has the highest power of the numerator than the denominator? Ruben? An oblique asymptote. Yeah, it has to be oblique. Reason being, x is greater than what? The highest power of the denominator. The first step we need to use what? Use long division. But the bullet is the one which is moving with the speed like this if i able to do this can you mute your, mi your microphone mute your microphone so i'm going to have x square minus 4x minus 5 you say over x minus 3 we use long division here but before you use the so-called long division if you use a long division the quotient you are going to get is going to be oblique asymptote but before that find the so-called vertical asymptote Quickly, someone to tell me how are we going to find the so-called vertical asymptote on this one? How do you find the vertical asymptote? Gloria? We equate the denominator to zero. Okay, so we are going to say x minus 3 equal to zero. Meaning that vertical asymptote for this one has to be what? Three. Reason being, this is going to give us positive three. You come to the issue of long division. You say x minus 3. I'll do it like this. So I'll say x square minus 4x minus 5. So x into that, we're going to have x. If you say this multiplied by that, we're going to have x square. This multiplied by that, we're going to have minus 3x. We subtract. These are going to be cancelled. Negative four x minus negative three x. We're going to get negative x. So this into that we're going to get what? 
negative 1 like this. Negative 1 multiplied by that will get negative x. Negative 1 multiplied by that, I will get positive 3. I will say, drop this one, which is negative 5. We subtract again. So, negative 3, sorry, negative 5 minus 3. What answer are we going to get? We are going to get negative 8. Forget about this. We are only interested in the oblique asymptote where y is going to be equal to what? Y has to be equal to y has to be equal to x minus 1. So we found what we call the horizontal asymptote and this one is going to be my oblique asymptote where y is equal to x minus 1. So the issue is like for this one, do not find the y-intercept and x-intercept based on the oblique asymptote. No. You can only find the x-intercept and y-intercept for this one whenever you want to draw this one on your graph. But generally, if you want to find y-intercept and x-intercept for this entire function, for you to know where is the original function going to lie, use the original function. Use the original function. Okay. So look, we have sorry, vertical asymptote, we are saying it has to be equal to 3. Then oblique asymptote, we are saying y is equal to what? x minus 1. Now, how do you find this x-intercept? These are, these are the things that are very, very inter, uh, important. X-intercept, we have this function. This function is what we have been given, which is x to the power 2 minus 4x minus 5. You divide this by x minus 2. Sorry, minus 3. To find the so-called x-intercept, y must be equal to what? Zero. Y has to be equal to zero. So what you're going to understand here is this. If you say y is equal to zero, we are going to find the so-called x-intercept. How possible is that? Is it that I'm going to find the x-intercept? Y is equal to x. Sorry. Input f of x. Then minus 4x minus 5 over uh, x minus 3. So if you want, you want to find... Uh, x intercept, you have to make sure that y has to be equal to 0, or rather f of x has to be equal to 0. So if I put 0 here, you multiply by that, we are going to end up with x square minus 4x minus 5. So use a simple mathematics by factorization here, you, you end up uh, having a correct answer. So what are the factors in this case? What are the factors in this case? We are going to have x square, I'll say plus x minus 5x minus 5 equal to 0. So definitely we are going to have x open x plus 1 minus 5 open x minus sorry plus 1 equal to 0. So we are going to have x plus 5 and also x plus 1 equal to 0. So since we are going to have two different answers for the numerator, the only thing which is going to help us identify which one is going to be our original graph is the y-intercept now. I'll say x has to be equal to 5, x has to be equal to negative 1. These are what we call x intercepts for this what, same graph. I'll come to y intercept. Y intercept, we say x must be equal to what? x has to be equal to 0. x has to be equal to 0. So if you put 0 here, you put 0 there, you put 0 here, what answer are you going to get for y? Definitely, we are going to get negative 5 over negative 3. Reason being, this is going to be 0. That one, 0. This one, 0. Negative 5 divided by negative 3, we are going to get 5 over 3. Now, we have all the, all the things that are very, very important. We have all the things that are very, very important. The thing is, we need to draw now our graph. We have to draw our graph pa, pa, like this. First of all, I said you need to look at what we call the vertical asymptote. We said the vertical asymptote has to be what? It has to cross on 3. Like this. You have to put a dotted line like this. Vertical asymptote like this. Next thing, before even I understand most of this part for... Um, the so-called y-intercept and the like. What you're going to do, look at what we call the oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote. 
So for oblique okay. asymptote, we have no, y, which is going to be equal to x, equal x minus 1, right? So, so to so find so this one or to sketch this one, you can either use a table. You just assume any numbers you can get. 1, 2. If you put 1 here, we are going to get what? 0. If you put 2 there, we are going to get what? 1. I will come here. I will say 1, comma 0. We are going to have 1, comma 0 somewhere here. Oh, sorry. 1, comma 0. It will be at this given point. That's why you are going to have 1, comma 1, 1, comma 0. If you have 2, comma 1, where are you going to have 2, comma 1? 2 is between 1 and 3. This is going to be somewhere here. 2 comma 1 it can be somewhere here. If you connect this and that one, we have to connect these two points by extending a line in a form of a dotted word line. This is going to be what? It has to be y is equal to x minus c1. That is your what? Uh -huh. you, you have a question? Yes, um, on the y intercept there, how did you come up with 5 over If you put 0, 0, 0, what answer are you getting here? 100 times v1, 8. If we say for y intercept to get y intercept from this equation, you have to say x has to be equal to zero. Now, if you put zero here, zero square minus four zero minus five over zero minus three, what answer are you going to get? So if you divide negative 5 over divided by, I mean, if you have negative 5 divided by negative 3, what answer are you getting? Anyway, what answer are you getting if you divide negative 5 divided by negative 3? It's pushed by a force to a speed of 80. Yes, and as, as, if really, you have what? to cancel this uh, out, Kaili. Negative and negative, they are going to be divided. What you end up with a positive answer. Speed will be required to push the one thousand. Are you there? Kg. Yes. So you've drawn now the horizontal, I mean the vertical asymptote and the oblique asymptote. The thing now is to identify which one is going to be your original thing. Where is the original graph going to lie? You look at the same intercept for y and these two intercepts. If you check, we are saying y intercept is what? 5 over 3. It is going to be on the part of positive somewhere here. But if you check, we are also saying the x intercept has two different values. 5 and this one. Remember, I want to identify which one is going to be my original graph. So since this qualifies together with this value, definitely it is going to be my first x-intercept where the graph is going to lie. I can't pick this one. You can't connect this one and the one which is uh, going to be here because we are going to have 5 somewhere here. The other one is going to be negative 1 which is going to be somewhere there. So the original graph, it must come closer. Remember, an asymptote attracts a graph but doesn't allow to be cut by the graph. So meaning that the graph has to come from here, it will be closer to this line, it will move like this. It has to cross even per 1 and then it will go like this. Crossing per 1 and on the part of the horizontal, I mean the, the y-intercept. Meaning that the reflection for this graph must lie in the next quadrant. So since it is moving like this and the, and the asymptote is moving like this, the other graph, it has to come closer to this asymptote and it will move like this crossing on five it will go like that or in other ways it can just be something like this crossing closer to the asymptotes like this and that one so this becomes the original graph but the other one it has to move like this and it will come in that given direction this entire thing is going to have x i mean f of x going to be x square minus 4x minus 5 over x minus 3. That's how you draw these graphs. That's how you draw these graphs. Let me try to draw the other graph now for...
Okay, let's proceed. Let's proceed, do we proceed? Now I have to go to the other type of asymptote which is for horizontal asymptote. We are going to have I'll say for f of x which is going to be equal to say 2 minus 2 x square over x square minus 4. Definitely if you try to equate this thing to 0 you can't equate this to 0 and I told you how to find the vertical asymptotes if you have been given a denominator which is going to be in this format first of all you say vertical asymptote this one this is difference of two squares we're going to have x minus 2 and x plus 2 and these are going to be my vertical asymptotes how i'll make sure that x minus 2 has been equated to 0 and also x plus 2 has been equated to 0 and x is going to be equal to 2 or x can be equal to what? Negative 2. These two are going to be my vertical asymptotes. If you are done with that, you come to the next thing now. What name is given to this type of asymptote? It has to be horizontal asymptote because we are having the same highest power of the denominator and the numerator. So what are you supposed to do if you have something like this? To find the horizontal asymptote, you need to do what? You divide throughout by the same what? Power of x. So horizontal asymptote it has to be, you say, 2 over x square minus 2 x square over x square. You divide here, say, x square over x square minus 4 over x square. This and that will go. Here we are going to get what? 1. Horizontal asymptote is going to be equal to, you say, 2 over x square minus 2 over here we are going to get what 1 minus there we are going to have 4 over x square if you reach at this given point we said you need to equate or rather to replace the the value or maybe the the, uh, the variable x by what by infinity we are going to have 2 over even if it is having square here still you just replace it by what infinity you say 2 sorry over uh, we're going to have one minus four over infinite like this so these two this one and that one they'll go because you're going to have zero so zero minus two negative two one minus zero one getting negative two so i'll say horizontal asymptote it has to give us what negative two meaning that the horizontal line must cross on negative 2 okay you come to the issue of y intercept and x intercept to get y intercept we said x must be equal to what x has to be equal to 0 you have to make sure that you come back to this original function i'm saying y because i've taken f of x as just one and the same like y so if you have this function, you replace 0 here and you place 0 there. 
what answer are you going to get? You understand that y intercept is going to give you something like this. y is going to be equal to 2 minus 0 over 0 minus 4. This is going to be equal to 2 over negative 4, which is going to be equal to negative 1 over. These are simple mathematics. These are simple mathematics. We can't even be wasting time on this one. If you, you, you replace 0 here, it's 0. You put 0 here, 0. 2 minus 0, 0. I mean 2. 0 minus 4, negative 4. You divide, you're going to get negative half. So you are done with this part of the horizontal, I mean the y-intercept. If you come to x-intercept, x-intercept, y must be equal to what? Zero. Now if you, suppose you equate everything to zero, like you put this thing, I mean you, you take this one to be zero. If you multiply this by zero, you are going to get the numerator only, of which we are going to end up with something like this, 2, 2x, two square meaning that what you are going to do here you equate everything to to zero because you're going to end up with zero as f of x so if you take this to the other side or you take this one to the other side you're going to have 2x square over 2 if you try to divide we we'll have x square going to be equal to 1 here if you square root you square root remember once you introduce a square root on a on any number you're including plus or minus meaning that x is going to be plus or minus one we're going to have x which is going to be negative one then x is going to be plus one so x can either be one or it will also be what negative one so these are the values for x intercept and this one is going to be for what for y intercept we try to draw now how is the graph going to be. First of all, focus on the vertical asymptote. You come to the horizontal asymptote. Then look at the intercepts you are having. And definitely, you'll be able to draw the original graph. The reflected, the reflected um, graph has to be on the part of what? It has to be on the part of the other sides. Okay. So right here, I'll say horizontal asymptote, we are saying it has to be negative 1 over 2. Vertical asymptote, we are saying it has to do what? Uh, it has to be negative 2 and 2. These are going to be drawn like the way they are. Then x-intercept, you say we are having negative 1 and 1. Then y-intercept. Uh, the so-called y-intercept, we are having negative 1 over 2. We sketch. If you have this information, ah, you can't even be having challenges, I'm telling you. You won't be having any challenges. So long as you are able to find these numbers, no any challenges. Remember, vertical asymptotes, we have two. What are those? The first one has to cross where there is what? Where there is 2. The other one is going to cross where there is what? Where there is. So we're going to have a negative 2 and 2. Like this. We are, we've drawn the vertical asymptotes. It's possible that you can have two different vertical asymptotes. Then after doing that now, you come to what? You come to the part of what we call the intercepts. You start with either y-intercept or x-intercept. But, but before you do that, look at the horizontal asymptote. Look at the horizontal asymptote. I, I feel like we've made a mistake somewhere. Let me check first the y-intercept that we have. Okay, we have this one. Then, uh, the, okay. Horizontal asymptote, it has to be, it has to be negative 2, not this one. It has to be negative Two. So it will cross on negative 2 again. You come on negative 2. That's why you're going to draw a horizontal line. Like this. Definitely this is going to be negative hmm? 2. Remember when drawing the graph, you need to focus on the part of both the I mean the, the intercepts. So I'll start. Y intercept has to be what? Negative 1. You draw like this. It has to come somewhere here. Say negative 1 over 2. 
meaning that your graph has to lie in between by crossing where the original graph must be in between by crossing where on negative one it will be like this i'm going to do it like this so if you check we have this as the uh, vertical asymptote and also this one as the horizontal asymptote same applies even here this as the vertical and also this one so if you take this one to be a vertical asymptote and this one to be horizontal this is going to be the first quadrant of this line and that line meaning that this graph is going to be reflected in this given part it will face like this it will point like this if you come on this one we have this one which has been cut by the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. So this asymptote and that asymptote makes a quadrant, which is going to be this one. Then the reflected line or reflected graph for this one has to lie in this other quadrant. That's what we said. We're going to do it like this. It has to face in that given direction, meaning that this entire thing is going to be what? Your f of x, which is going to be equal to, you are going to have 2 minus 2x squared, over x square minus 4. This is how you have to draw things that are having two different vertical asymptotes and one horizontal asymptote. Suppose your graph was the original one lied in this part facing downwards. Ruben? So, as in, is it a must that always we must draw a reflected graph? Always. That's the meaning of asymptotes. If you, if you haven't indicated this, it doesn't give any meaning to the so-called asymptotes. It's a must, in short. You have to draw these reflected graphs. If you have this one, you can't have a reflected graph like you draw it like here. No. Don't do that. You have a reflected graph in the opposite quadrant to this one based on the asymptotes you are from what? Drawing. If your original graph was to lie in this given part, it first in that given direction. The reflected graph has to come in this given quadrant. Reason being, that's what this line and that line divides. Simple. As simple as that. Okay, let me try to draw the last one now. I will just sketch the last one. Then, wherever I haven't understood, it will be a chance now to do what to ask. Okay, so say scratch f of x, which is equal to 2 minus x square over x plus 1. Okay, so this has to be oblique asymptote. If you are able to identify, say, this type of asymptote is going to be this, you also have to know what method to use for you to resolve that same what asymptote. Firstly, you have to know the vertical asymptote. I said even if it is horizontal or oblique, still vertical asymptote is going to be there. So vertical asymptote, we are saying x plus 1 has to be equal to 0. Then x is going to be equal to what? Negative 1. You are done. You are getting max. Just by finding this one is 1.5 max given. Then you come to this given part now. Since it is oblique, what are you supposed to do? It is oblique. What, uh, what method are we going to use? Long division. You can't use a long division whereby you're having a number before x. You have to arrange these numbers in a proper way. And it will be like this now. It will be negative x square plus 2. You divide this by x plus 1. Using a long division method, we are going to have x plus 1, you say, this you have to write it in a proper way. It will be negative x squared plus 0x plus 2. We are trying to maintain the powers of what? The powers of x. Negative x squared plus 0x plus 2. So if I say this into that, I will get negative x. The negative x multiplied by that, negative x square. Negative x multiplied by that, I'll get negative x. You cancel this because negative x minus negative x, sorry, negative x square minus negative x, we're going to get uh, zero. 
x minus negative x, I'll get x. This into that, we are getting what? 1. You say plus 1. Alright, we say plus 1. So this multiplied by that, we're going to get x. Then this multiplied by that, we're going to get plus 1. You drop this down, we're going to have plus 2 here. So these are going to be cancelled. These are going to be cancelled. This, okay, let me put minus there. This minus that, 0. 1. Don't forget. I mean, forget about this part. You focus on this one, which is going to be oblique asymptote now. You say y has to be equal negative x plus 1. So when drawing this one, you can either use the issue of asymptote, I mean intercepts. If you want to find the y-intercept for this one, x has to be equal to 0, meaning that you're going to have y equal to 1, whereby x is equal to 0. The first coordinates will be 0, 1. You want to find the y, I mean in the x intercept y must be equal to 0. If you take this one to the other side, we are going to have x as equal to what? 1. Definitely we are going to have 1 comma 0. So these are the things that will help you sketch the graph. You are done with the so-called uh, oblique asymptote. You are done with the so-called oblique asymptote. You come to the part of intercepts on this original graph now because that is the only thing which helps you find the location of the original graph. So if you come here, you want to find the so-called uh, y-intercept for this one. Y-intercept, you are saying x must be equal to what? Zero. So if I put zero here, I put zero there, definitely f of x is going to be equal to 2 over 1. Meaning that y-intercept, y must be equal to what? 2, the first thing. You come to the part of x-intercept. We are saying for you to find x-intercept, this one is going to be shown like y has to be what? Has to be 0. So if you multiply this multiplied by 0, we are going to have 2 minus x square equal to 0. You take this to the other side, we are going to have x square equal to what? 2. You square root. You square root. Definitely, I will pick the positive side, which is going to be plus root of 2, comma, x can also be equal to what? Negative root of 2. These are going to be what? My x intercepts. Now, the entire information is around now. I will start sketching. We are going to start from where? Vertical asymptote. Very, very important. You start from vertical asymptote. Then you come to oblique asymptote. Then you write the y-intercept. After writing the y-intercept, you come to what we call the x-intercept. So, vertical asymptote, we are saying x has to be what? Negative 1. X has to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so if you are able to find this, you now sketch the so-called oblique asymptote, which is given by this equation. I used a simple method for me to come up with the coordinates I'm going to use. So, 0, 1, 0, 1, it has to be somewhere here. Then you come 1, 0, it has to be somewhere there. This is going to be oblique asymptote. You draw it like this. Don't get used to saying, no, it has to be always pointing in this given direction. No, it's not always. Then you are going to write this one as y equal to negative x plus 1, like this. Okay. Now, you focus on the part of the, um, the so-called y-intercept. y-intercept, we are saying y has, has to be what? 2. It will come at this given point. Like this. Then remember this is 1. It crosses on 1. If you pick the part of these numbers, we are having negative root of 2 and positive root of 2. So since y is on this given part, meaning that x can't be on this part, reason being we are saying the graph shouldn't be touching the asymptotes. Definitely the one which is going to qualify for x-intercept has to be this one. It must be that one. 
you have to draw this one where is it going to be it can just be what at this given point because one and root of two root of two is greater than one so your graph the original graph has to point like this vertical asymptote will continue it has to move from this given part it will cut on y intercept and also cut on what x intercept without even touching this line so it will cross here it will come like this then it will go up to that given point like this so if you have this graph which one do you think is going to be the opposite quadrant for this graph definitely if we have this line that line if this one has been taken as the first quadrant the opposite quadrant must be the graph has to cut on negative root of two now here it will cross on root of two so the opposite of this one has to be something like this it will cross on this one and face in that given direction pointing in this given parts then this becomes f of x which is going to be equal to you say 2 minus x square over x plus 1 this is how you have to be sketching these things they are very simple like very very simple you won't even be having challenges when it comes to uh, sketching these things